standing in books and books, Mitchell Kaplan's bookstore in Coral Gables with Mitchell. And I remember exactly where I was standing and he turned to me and he said, I have your next book. And people say that to, to writers a lot and it's never true. Um, but you know, Mitchell and I are old friends and so I thought, well, I'm, I'm going to hear him out. And he started telling me this wild story about this guy who was this young Belgian guy who ran off with the gypsies as a child and then he was in the war as a resistance fighter and there were these two women and he married one of them and then the, the, they were separated and then there was another one and they ended up in this polygamous marriage and it was this great story. Now as it turns out it wasn't exactly he had gotten the story kind of wrong. He'd conflated the yours story, the real story, with an Isaac Bathsheba Singer story. <laughs> but it, it was intriguing. And, and his sister is a documentary filmmaker, and she had done a film on polygamy. And in the course of researching that film, she had interviewed the yours. This was after the husband, Jan, was gone. And she had interviewed the two wives, and she'd become friends with them. And they, after he died, I think they were kind of looking for a writer to tell their story, but they looked for a long time. And I think, and Marion would just dismiss them one after the other. They would ask the wrong question and she wouldn't like them and it was like, they're gone, they can't do it. But people kept coming to the house because it's such a good story. People wanted to tell it. And so Mitchell thought, you know, I would be the right person to tell this story. And I filed the idea away. I, was, I'm, I tend to be very single focused and I was working on something else. But then when I was done with that, I didn't have anything else that was grabbing my attention and that had continued to kind of percolate in the back of my head. So I made a plane reservation. I went up to New York for a blind date and I met Marion. Uh, she was the, the lone survivor of, of the three of them. And I, when I first met her, she was 84 years old. And I showed up at her door. I mean, she was expecting me. Uh, but Susan Kaplan, Mitchell's sister, was supposed to introduce us. And there had been a snowstorm. And so she couldn't get to the other side. She couldn't get downtown. And I, you know, rang the doorbell. And Marion came to the door. And she was very wary. Um, and she confessed to me she hadn't slept at all the night before. She was so nervous about us doing this. And so it really was like a first date because she was checking me out to see if she could trust me with her story. And I was checking her out to see if their story was something I wanted to spend the next several years of my life with because that's how long it takes me to write a book. So I don't enter into these things lightly. But we had sort of, we had an instant rapport. Which is not to say that she trusted me entirely. She withheld things. She, uh, when she started telling the story, they had been talking to journalists, there had been things published, they'd been asked questions, and they had sort of stock answers. But those are stock answers for an article length. And a full length book, I was asking, I started asking off script, forcing her off script, and she started telling me things, some things that she had never told anyone before. And going back to her experience during World War II, which was traumatic, um, she had she had lost her, her sister, had been killed in front of her eyes by a car and her mother died of cancer a few months later and then the Nazis literally landed on her beach in her backyard shortly thereafter and then one day she came home and the housekeeper took her to this house she had never been to before and um, took her upstairs and all of her bedroom furniture was there and just kind of left her there without any explanation and what had happened was unbeknownst to her her father was Jewish and he had gone into hiding. And so she spent the war years kind of being um, shunted from one 
caretaker to the next. One caretaker would take her in and then they would have to go into hiding and she'd go to the next one. And so when she started telling me this story, there were things that she had not really gone back and looked at or talked about ever. And it became for her kind of like therapy. And she became very dependent on our, on our interviews too.